In this pod, we'll look at how to investigate the size of the force on a current carrying conductor inside a magnetic field. The field of a magnet can be represented by force lines drawn from the north pole of the magnet to the south pole of the magnet. These are known as magnetic flux lines. The magnetic force is strongest where the lines are close together. You can demonstrate this by placing a bar magnet under a sheet of paper and scattering iron filings on top of the paper. If you gently shake the paper, the filings will take the shape of the field. A coil of wire will also produce a magnetic field when an electric current is passed through it. A coil like this is called a solenoid. If you put a soft magnetic material such as iron inside, it will become an electromagnet. You can investigate the strength of the electromagnet made in this way by putting five turns of wire around a rod of a magnetic material, such as a nail. You can then test how many paper clips, end to end, it will pick up. Add another five coils and test how many more paper clips it will attract. Do this a few more times. Record your results and plot a graph with a number of turns on the x-axis and number of paper clips on the y-axis. Now let's look at force on a current carrying conductor. When a current passes through a conductor in a magnetic field, a force is exerted on the conductor. The force exerted is at 90 degrees to the direction of the current, which, in turn, is at 90 degrees to the direction of the magnetic field. You can remember this by using Fleming's left-hand rule. Your thumb shows the direction of the motion, your first finger shows the direction of the magnetic field, and your second finger shows the direction of the current. There is a standard convention about how to show the direction of a current in a wire when you draw a diagram. When the current is going away from you, draw an X in the circle that represents the wire. When the current is coming forward, towards you, draw a dot in the circle. To carry out the investigation, you will need to fix two magnets in a frame with opposite poles facing each other. Fix the current carrying conductor so that it is placed at 90 degrees to the magnetic field and is between the poles of the magnets. The magnetic field is from north to south. The force is in a vertical direction at 90 degrees to both the magnetic field and the current, as you can show by using Fleming's left hand rule. The whole arrangement is placed on a sensitive top pan balance, which is then set to zero. Pass a direct current through the wire. Because the magnetic force produced is in the vertical direction, according to Newton's third law, there must be an equal and opposite force acting downwards. The size of this force can be read from the display on the balance. If the reading is in grams, you would need to convert this to kilograms by dividing by a thousand, and then multiplying by 10 to convert the reading to a force, in newtons. If you use a variable resistor in the circuit, you can vary the current. Record pairs of readings of current and force. You can use your results to plot a graph of current on the x-axis against force on the y-axis. The graph is a straight line passing through the origin, which shows that the force on the current carrying conductor is directly proportional to the current. The equation for force on a conductor is force equals magnetic flux density multiplied by current multiplied by the length of the conductor in the magnetic field. This is shown as F equals B times I times L, where F is force, B is magnetic flux density, I is current, and L is the length of the conductor in the magnetic field. Magnetic flux density is the number of flux lines passing through an area of one square meter. It's measured in teslas, symbol T. You can calculate B because the gradient of your graph of current against force would equal B multiplied by L. L is constant, so dividing your gradient by the length of the conductor would give you the flux density of the magnet.